Hi again, hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Matthew, and uh, I've been working with Elm for um, quite a, quite some time now. Um, I creating packages in Elm is something that everyone should be interested in because it's how we grow the community with the number of packages. It's not the only way, but it helps. Um, so I I will talk about that. And uh, it's not going to be me talking alone. So if you have any question at any time, stop me and ask your question. Just straight. Yeah. Don't don't wait for me to, I don't know, a slide or two slides. Or I hope it will be interactive. <laughs> so yes. So we'll go through how current package system work. Then some of the issues with the way it works right now, um, how we design a package, uh, when should we create one, why should we not, and uh, actual practice about publishing. Um, I will need a volunteer for a, a demo. We'll not go through the end of the story, but we'll just try to go through, and at some point, uh, we'll just not publish it. And then, so this uh, volunteer will work on the creation of a package, and then I will show the update of a package with one package that need updating. So uh, that's it. Uh, let's start. So first, the M package repository. So who one here has already seen this website? Okay. So. I guess the others have not been using Elm yet, no? <laughs> um, so this is like your home page when you are doing Elm development. Uh, this is a very simple page. Uh, you have a search engine here, uh, quite basic. Basically, you can just search for things that are in the name of the package or the username of the creator of the package or description of the package and that's all. You have some fancy search engine for looking for types of functions but I'm not sure it's working very well because I sometimes I try to use it and uh, it, yeah I don't know. Um, so you have on the right side uh, interesting resources um, like basic guide of how to use package and uh, design guideline for API, for documentation, etc. And just below that, you have links to the most common packages in Elm. So whenever you have a question about how, which function, how this function works or how this other function works, you should find it here. Usually it's in core, if it's core Elm function or whatever thing you need. Yeah. How, how is the API design guideline? Yeah, it's okay. It's it's uh it's quite small. Uh, I have the link later, so we can we can go there if you want at at some point. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just generic guideline. It's not very specific. It's just detailing you what you should do, what you should not do, extra. But we we'll go there. So the first thing you have to know about packages is uh, how to describe a package. So in npm. Uh, you have the package.json file that describes your uh, node package. And in Elm, you have the Elm package.json file that soon will be a bit different. Hello. Um, so it's, it's quite simple. You describe the version. So this is what, it, uh, what, the, what this file looks like when you create a new project. You don't have added any other dependency, everything. It's basic. Yeah, it's just how it looks like at the beginning. So version, uh, summary, where you put the summary of your package, uh, where your package live, so on GitHub. Uh, we'll tell a bit more about that later. Uh, the license of your package. So by default, um, I think it's uh, BSD3 for everything. Um, you can choose something different, of course. Uh, the advantage of this license is that it's very permissive, so 
you can reuse those packages in any open source project or private project if you want to relicense it or I don't know do anything that is cooperative with it. It's like but MIT license, no? Yeah, it's it's roughly like MIT. It's a little less primitive than MIT, but it's roughly like MIT. And at the other end of the uh, spectre, you have like the GPL license, which is really uh, copy lefted everything. You have one GPL file. Your whole project must be GPL. And in between, you have like the uh, MPL license, Mozilla Public License, which um, is more permissive. You can reuse MPL file in other projects which are not MPL, but the file still needs to stay MPL. So it's a bit more flexible, and you keep the fact that the one thing you wrote open source is always distributed as open source. Um, so then you have um, the folders that um, contains your modules. Uh, initially, it's just the um, current, current directory. Yeah. Uh, you have the exposed modules in those folders because you don't have to expose everything. You can just expose a few different modules of your package and the dependency your package depend on. So we'll see how it works a little bit later, but basically you say the name of the package and then the version of the package. So it will be always something like that. We'll explain it later. And finally, the version of Elm you are using, because of course, uh, Elm is very opinionated and not like Python, for example, when the main version changes, everyone has to change to the main version, otherwise uh, the ecosystem is not as good as it should be. So you always have to specify the version you are using so that other people know and the system knows if it's compatible. Uh, so how do we install a package? Uh, it, it's simple actually. If you have Elm installed on your computer, the best way to install a package is just find the package on the repository, we, the web website repository, and then you have the name of the author, the version of the, the, the name of the package, and it's just Elm package install on this thing. So this, it will change uh, the JSON file by adding a new dependency here and downloading uh, the um, source of the files and put them in some special directory. So yeah, quite simple. Uh, there is another way to do it. So instead of just using L package install, which will put a new line in the dependency here, you can just put manually the new light in the dependency and then call mpackage install without anything. So if you have a lot of uh, package to install at once, you can just add all the names here in this file and then do m install, package install and it will install everything. You don't have to use mpackage install the first one and package install the second one. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if you can do mpackage install and then multiple packages. Does anyone know? No? Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you don't do minus y, it always asks you to install. Yeah. You have to yeah. If this way you have to do it once, so um, using a package, uh, quite straightforward. Uh, if your package, um, I will take the example of um, this package, mouse. Uh, this is the um, GitHub repository, and the package is available in here. Um, mouse events. Oh shit! <laughs> uh, I'm trapped in my old in my own game. So here, for example, uh, there is one uh, module in this package. So this thing reflects the readme of the package, and then the modules are here. So there is a mouse module, which has a few different types and functions. So if you want to use, for example, the mouse module inside the 
and mouse events package. Nothing complicated. You just in your in your file like main.elm, you just import mouse. If you have installed it before with this or this, it will just work. So just import the modules of the package you have already installed, and it's okay. Um, removing a package. Uh, uh, yeah. What happens if you have another module that's exposing the same variable mount? Yeah, same module name. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work. It doesn't. Yeah. Um, so there are very rare issues like this one, but there exists uh, between different uh, uh, projects. I think there is even one between the style elements and the CSS. Um, but um, <laughs> what you should do usually is try to namespace your, pro your module. Like, um, for example. So when you're creating a package, um, yeah. you are uploading to um, this package site, right? Mm -hmm. um, does it throw an exception and tell you that, uh, hey, some, somebody has already taken the name mouse? Or no, no, because uh, you, multiple people can have the same um, module names. Uh, it's, if it's not in the same context, they should never be used at the same time. So Elm doesn't prevent you from publishing a package with modules that have the same name than other packages. Yeah. So you can. But you, what, what you should do if your use case is not really specific is namespace your um, modules, like, for example, Um, so this is um, this is a package called Open Solid Geometry. It's to do some geometric stuff, and here all the package name are namespaced with Open Solid, so that if you want to use the, these packages, you cannot have any conflicts with other I don't know other library that will have the vector 3D module or something like that, which, is, which can be quite common if you compose different linear algebra library or something like that. So if there are two modules with the same name and you have unfortunately installed them, um, is there a way on, on code that you can alias the import? Um, you can alias the import, but like after import. importing, like, you can use uh, import uh, something as something else. But the import something will not work if you do it two times if it doesn't know which one it is. So you yeah. can't alias from module name to package, right? That's the yeah. And alias the naming inside. So in, in that situation? Yeah, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's crude. Right. But I mean, uh, people try. Because if, if it's two projects that are likely to be used together. Usually the um, authors are know that they are likely to be used together, so they try not to use the same names, mm. module names. But yeah, it can happen. Mm. Uh, so removing a package, I don't think there is a comment for removing a package. So. Uh, what you have to do is just remove the line in the mpackage JSON file, and then you can try to remove only the module things that are inside this folder that are related to this package. But you really, usually, you will just remove all this directory, which is where. Elm puts everything it needs, the sources, the compilation, and everything. So you just remove this one, and you re-download the packages, and you recompile the packages. I mean, it will re-download it er automatically, but it will just take long, longer time to recompile. But it's safer to do it this way. Um, so the versioning of the packages. Uh, when you specify a package, you specify a version like this one. 
And um, what it means, uh, it's that the meaning actually is really precise. Like the versions of package are semantic and forced, meaning it's just not semantic that you choose the semantic. It's a semantic that is specified and that is enforced by the Elm compiler. And what is enforced is that you have three parts in the version, a major, a minor, and a patch. So a major uh, change means that there is a breaking change in, in the code. So for example, uh, one function uh, doesn't have the same signature as before or one function was removed from a module, or one module was removed, or one type has changed. Hello. What uh, happens if you, change, uh, how a you don't change the signature of the function, but yeah. you change the function itself? So you mean the implementation inside? Yeah, implementation. So it's just a patch. So it's internal, just a patch. Yeah. even though it's a breaking change? It cannot be a breaking change. But if the signature doesn't change. The behavior of the function. The behavior, yeah. 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 Of course. You, you yeah. have a function uh, add, and instead of adding, you just multiply. You change the yeah, of course, function. of course. But, but people won't do that. But yeah, so it's, it's just uh, um, it's, it's the behavior, yeah. So wh what it means is that you will not have a uh, compilation error or um, runtime error, because you never get a runtime error, but you will not get an a language error okay. with a, a patch okay. or a minor issue. But of course, you can get like yeah, behavioral logical, logical error. Yeah. yeah, you cannot prevent that. Okay. Or maybe we can in a few years, I don't know. Um, so major, so something break. So that's why um, when you specify a dependency uh, of a version, if you know it works with this one, you know it will work until the next major break. So you won't have any issue with this. Uh, minor, minor is the second. It means that it is a non-breaking change, but something Im still important, like a new functionality that was not uh, available before. Like you have a new module, or you have a new function, or a new type declared somewhere. So usually it's new stuff. Uh, and then you have the patch modification. So these are just transparent for the code, like for the compilation aspect of the code, meaning like uh, the documentation change or an internal implementation change, but it won't change anything for the users of the package. Sorry. Yeah. You mentioned that Elm actually enforced this versioning. Yeah. How does it enforce? So when uh, you uh, try to publish for the first time a package, it must be 1.0.0. And then any time you want to update a package, there is a command, which is package bump, and it chooses the new version. It's not you who chooses it. It chooses the new version, and it modifies, it modifies automatically uh, this. Do you know how it works? Yeah. It, it analyzes your, the type signatures of all, uh, of all your, um, your code. And it basically has rules like these ones. So if there, is a, if there, is, if there are only new stuff, it's just non-breaking change. If there are stuff that are changed from the last time you published the package, it's breaking change, something like that. And it compares to the current Git version on the package? To the last one that was published. And with the, the next one that you are going to publish, so the one that is uh, in your current workspace, workspace state of your Git project. Because every everything is version with Git, so mm -hmm. yeah, because you have to put it on GitHub. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other question about this? No? OK. So yeah, the, the good thing with enforcing versioning is that you never have a breaking issue because some package just thought that they were doing a minor change, but actually it changed something major for someone else. OK, so a few drawbacks of the system, the packaging system. First, it's hosted on GitHub. So this is something that Evan said he is also a priority. Uh, 
guess not really high priority, but they want to have their independence from GitHub at some point, at least for the version that has already been published. But right now it's not the case. So um, you don't control GitHub. So anything happened to GitHub, uh, Elm doesn't exist anymore. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Also, for example. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's just how it works. So when you use the Elm package command, you exchange information with GitHub and with the Elm package website also that has a few things that are stored inside there. But every data, the source, and everything is pulled from GitHub. So, for example, I had an issue one time where I wanted to use a, a package that was published. Uh, all the documentation, everything was on Elm package. And when I tried to use it, I had an issue with GitHub. I was thinking that my connection was broken. It was just that the author of the package removed the package from GitHub, so you couldn't download it anymore. So every package that depending on this one could not work anymore. Uh, yeah. So, so the entry is still on the Elm package website, but the actual yeah. package when you publish, it loads a few things like the documentation and uh, the descriptions of the M package uh, JSON, but uh, the sources are not uh, fetched. So, yeah. only some descriptions, or I think it's fetched like the the um, uh, type signatures of stuff, but I'm not sure. Mm. When, when you're doing a Elm package install, like under the hood, um, how does it talk to GitHub? Does it use SSH to clone the repositories, or does it just HTTP grab the GZIP files? I think it's HTTP, not SSH, because you don't have to set up any SSH to use it. So, but yeah, because if if Elm wanted to use it with their own token or stuff like that. It will, I mean, I'm not sure they could use it every time or for every user, every Elm user. So I think it uses their HTTPS, but it's not an issue for public packages because you can always access them with HTTPS. So another big issue with uh, the package system is that for now, for 018, it will change in 019. Um, all things are installed locally in your project folder. So meaning uh, you want to create a new project that just depend on uh, the core and the HTML thing that you have already installed in five of your other projects. You cannot do it. Or you have to manually hack it by copying and pasting things by hand. But uh, the normal way using Elm install something, it will have to pull again the things from uh, GitHub and to put it inside your Elm stuff directory. So inside this thing, you have different things. You have the sources of the different package you are using. Um, you have the, the build artifacts that are already being built so that you don't have to rebuild everything each time you, you, you make, you compile. And you have a file that gives you the exact dependencies so that you could use this one uh, to reset up the project for something else. I think it's useful for analysis thing and to know exactly what is installed in case you have a minor change that changed the behavior, for example. Yeah. You said right now it's the case, so are they going to change it in uh, version 19? Like, is it going to be global installation? Um, with Evan, you cannot say 100%, but uh, it's been said in different uh, medium of discussions uh, that it's going to change. Like uh, they want to have in your home space, in your home directory, uh, like a dot elm folder or something similar in which every package you pull will be inside, installed in this uh, hidden folder, hidden directory, so that each time you reuse a package that you have already downloaded, uh, already compiled, you don't have to do anything. It's just compiled and downloaded in your uh, home folder somewhere, and you just pull it and it works. Yeah. So 
I think it's going to be this way. I'm not sure. Yeah. <coughs> uh, another issue uh, that we didn't discuss previously with the packaging system of Elm is that to make sure that you have the guarantees of Elm, meaning no runtime errors and everything works when it compiles, you cannot have JavaScript in your packages. So it's Helm 100% or it cannot go to the package repository. So meaning, uh, if you want to use a JavaScript package, which is in NPM, uh, you have to rewrite it in Helm or uh, to use ports. So if you know what port is, there are the mean of discussing between JavaScript and Helm to make an interface of the different uh, APIs. So it's growing. Like uh, if you if you go to this web uh, post on Reddit, um, the guy who say that there are currently this amount of packages is just scrolling and just one JavaScript command to count the number of things that are on the pack on the website. And it say that he says that uh, six months ago there were like. Uh, 200 or 300 packages, and now it's almost 800, so it's growing. So even if sometimes Elm, people think that Elm is stale or stealing, it's not. It's just that the master branches of the development are still because they are working on the dev things, and they do major updates really slowly. That it's going to be a year now since uh, zero eighteen has been uh, uh, out. So it's really stable, actually, even if it's not a stable version. But uh, yeah, so soon we will have 0.19. I think uh, maybe a month or two, something like that. I have no idea. I don't know. But um, did you feel that there was some really missing package in, in Elm? I know there's like a few packages, but everything that I was looking for, I always kind of found something. Um, I've not been using a lot of. Uh, web development packages, but I know there are web API that are missing that are important, like using um, database. File uploading, for example. But if um, you, you can find some custom GitHub re repository where some guy has, uh, it's not on the end package website. Yeah. It's like a custom package that you install with another installer, blah, blah. But you can always make it work. And so. Yeah. I found that most of the time when you need something, at least one person has found like a solution for it. Yeah, it's not always easy to, f yeah, to find that. Um, package manager, uh, just, it's, it's yeah, that's the one, that's the one. So, so I think the one is most awesome. permissive, like it allows uh, package authors to write native code. Yeah. And GitHub install? Yeah. 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 If you want uh, like some home cooked package, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. <laughs> I'm not sure you should, but sometimes you can. Yeah, yeah I, uh. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's just that they use native code. OK, from the individual personal point of view, there is nothing wrong with it. From the community point of view, um, it can um, encourage people uh, using JavaScript in Elm. And it's not the, the way that Elm wants to be developed, because in the end, Right now, JavaScript is just a compiling platform. So if you are using JavaScript in a package, it means that you are committing to JavaScript. And at some point, for example, if everything is going to be compiled to uh, WebAssembly or whatever language, your code is not working anymore. Yeah, so yeah. just in the meanwhile, until the native yeah. libraries get a little bit. Yeah, better. of course. And we will have like children before it's compiling to something else. So, yeah, we have time. <laughs> Is it possible theoretically that it would compile to something else? Like yeah, I think I think at some point it will compile to WebAssembly, but uh, w the WebAssembly ecosystem is not mature enough yet because it doesn't have a um, garbage collector to languages that don't manage their um, memory themselves. But yeah. I think, I think it's possible because there's another competing language called PureScript. And PureScript are currently compiled to JavaScript, and I think they have another compiled package. Okay, interesting. 
Yeah, C, C++ yeah. and others, but it's a bit buggy, I guess, <laughs> I, I think. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think the, the core message is that as soon as you introduce direct bindings in JavaScript, you also give up the guarantee of no runtime error. So if yeah. you live with that, which you live with in pure JavaScript, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you're probably fine. But um, but seeing uh, whether the community likes to see whether we can, we can solve the problem without going into the native part, right? And a lot of things have actually shown up to be very nicely solvable using, for example, yeah. even if uh, sometimes in better abstraction. So I think that's sort of the, the reason there is. And it's also, I think, trying to encourage people to write Elm, yeah. to develop Elm code that yeah. do things that are already done in other languages, but better. So, yeah. Um, so you just talked about it. Uh, what do you, you cannot with the M package uh, official uh, system? You cannot install private repository or repository that lives somewhere else than GitHub on that on GitHub or on your machine. So to do that, you have two tools. Uh, you have Elm GitHub install that you mentioned before, and you have uh, another one, Elm Groove that uh, basically replaces a uh, uh, package manager. So it can install local packages and uh, uh, GitHub uh, native and effects manager uh, packages. But yeah, as we said before, you should use it only if you know what you are doing and uh, if you don't want to regret it later. Yeah. yeah. So um, a few designing steps for your package. Um, so when should you create a package and when should you not? So you have um, general guidelines about creation of a package. So the guidelines are there. So it goes through this uh, point. So um, when should you create a package? So when you have something special you want to take care of, not try not to do something too generic, too general. Um, yeah, that's the no Haskell point. Uh, because yeah, sometimes they want to do something too generic. Um, write good documentations. Um, this this one is really interesting. Uh, the data structure should be the last argument. Uh, it means that when you design the fun the um, the um, hello Peter, <laughs> when you design your your API. If you put the data structure or the main data of your of a function as the last argument, you can reuse it in uh, the function that is um, after in your flow of uh, computation, and you can use the pipes syntax in Elm. I don't know if you know about it. Uh, if you don't know, just uh, it's it's explained in the in the guide. But it's it's really nice to to make a flow of computations and see how things evolved little by little. So it's a really good advice. And then a few things about namings, like don't use three-letter namings, like don't use TLA, three-letter abbreviations. Um, avoid infix operator, so infix operator without a name, because it's uh, not usable if you want to research them. Uh, on the package and the functions, if you want to know what what it's doing, it's better to research something with a name, with letters. So yeah, these are basically the main guidelines. And so then, once you know about that, um, when you want, when you think of creating a package, you should ask yourself at least these questions. So does the feature you want already exist somewhere? So you have to look on uh, uh, the package, the Elm package website, of course, also on GitHub. Sometimes packages are not uh, 
pub um, published on GitHub, but someone has already done it. And if it's not available, is it uh, just a small extension of something that already exists or not? If it's some, a small extension of something that already exists, the better way to do it is just contacting the person that is doing this repository. You can contact them usually through GitHub with issues or just Elm Slack, something like that, and discuss. It's the best way to grow the community and to have the things. Maybe sometimes you didn't even think of something and the creator of the package know the reason why it didn't do the thing you want to do and it gives you better insight of what you want to achieve in the end. So, um, then, are you sure you need this? If it's not just something you need one time in your project, it is, it, was this something you have been using repeatedly and you think a package would be useful? And is this something that is implementable only with Elm, no JavaScript, because otherwise you cannot create a package, an Elm package? And is your API, okay, not too generic, but not too specific uh, either, like, just in the right balance in the middle. Um, so once you decide you create a package, what are the things you need to do? Okay, so first we said, um, contact authors of similar packages and ask them if they are willing, or if you can, with a pull request, implement your new um, features. If they are not, verify that the package you want to create has a unique name because it's a mistake that some people did, including me, uh, creating a package name that has the same name of someone else and it's not a good idea because then when you want to reference it, you have to reference it with the full name and sometimes people look for it and they don't know which, time, which one they want to choose because they are the same name, etc. So try to be specific about what you are doing in your package with a specific name. Then uh, add license on README, so it's basic advice, but uh, yeah, you have to do it. Um, if you have images that you want to add in your README, um, images, uh, for example, that are inside the repository, GitHub can display them. But when they are published on uh, the M package website, they will not be visible because uh, the M package website is not GitHub, so they don't have access to things that are inside the repository. So if you want to add images, visuals in your package for in the README, use uh, something else with uh, absolute reference of the, um, of the image. So what good advice for this is that on GitHub, for example, every user in GitHub can create uh, your username.github.io uh, repository and inside this repository, everything that is inside this repository will be accessible through uh, uh, static, statically accessible from GitHub. So you can, put an you can put an image somewhere inside there and this link will uh, work and will display the image even in the readme in the package manager. So it's better if you want people to see your images in the package manager, not only on um, GitHub. Uh, so you have guidelines for um, uh, the documentation, we just, uh, okay, for the documentation also, and you have a way to preview documentation. So this is really useful, and we'll use it, I guess, uh, in a few minutes. And then also try to do tests and provide examples for your package, otherwise people are not going to use it, and people are not going to um, help you with your package and implementing stuff and whatever. Okay, so actual publishing. So first package release, I will need a volunteer who wants to try to do it. So who has never published any package here? So who volunteer? Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ah, come on. Just point you don't do it in French. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, so I've created a folder here, like Meetup, uh, there is already some, st oh shit, some stuff inside, I'm going to remove this. Um, um, huh? <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> I 
think star will work. Nope. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm. Yep. Okay, so there is dot git folder left, so it's okay. So, so yeah. I type here and I look here. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not mirrored. Uh, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, first we will initialize the repository. So, to the git repository, I've already initialized it, so you don't have to initialize it. Yeah. Uh, it's a good idea to put a git ignore file in all your repository because you don't want to put something online that shouldn't be online. So, there is a website that called gitignore.io that's really useful. You just put the different things you are using, like OS X, Windows, Elm, whatever, and then it gives you a, a file. So usually I do just this: I rec get the the file and I put it in a git, git ignore file. So copy and paste that. Yeah, but it's it's okay. It's already done, I think. Okay. Uh, oh no, it's not done. Oh no, it's not done. So yeah, you can do this if you want. Mm. Mm. Uh, ah, yeah, no, it's not working. No, whatever, uh, forget the git ignore file. So we'll start by initializing the package. So even, yeah, you can do lmake even in an empty directory, so it will create a few things. It's, it's a French keyboard. Yeah, I have a Japanese keyboard. Oh, you have a Japanese keyboard? Yeah, I live in Japan. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. So the Elm, yeah, is Elm is asking you if you want to install a few things. So it, it should not do this. It's just because the window is a bit small. But yeah. So it has compiled 37 modules. Yeah, we thought we had only three modules. But yeah, it's because it, there are modules that depend on other modules that are not public modules. Um, because there are mo multiple modules in each. Uh, uh, package, so that's why. But once we have done it, we don't have to compile any more of those ones, so it will be faster. Okay, so do you want to create a... Uh, what project do you have in mind? Hmm. What kind of... Or anyone? Anyone want to project something? To create something? Like, I don't know. What? What? <laughs> He said padlet. Padlet? Padlet. Yeah, padlet. What was what, what, it? Pa padlet is uh, like string padding, or like if you have uh, some string, you pad it left with some zeros or some spaces, and you fill it Ah, up. a package to pad left? Yeah. It, it's like uh, Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you can, yeah, create a pad left if you want. So I just create the source? Yeah. Usually it's better to put everything in, the, in, a, in a folder, so create a source folder, and then create your module. So uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, do you use Vim or? No, but uh, I, I guess I will learn today. No, but uh, <laughs> then, then it's, I have, um, I have also uh, um, Atom, I think. Yeah, I use uh, VS Code, but Atom, I guess Atom is fine. Yeah, yeah, we use Atom maybe. Um, but yes. I, I need to make a new file. Yeah, mm -hmm. I usually for me I have E. I type E and it opens an editor. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, type whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you can use. You can use. Atom. It shows. It yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but I have to create a, a file first. So you have to find a name. That's all. Atom and then pad, pad left. Yeah, I think it's a good name. Yeah. Uh, but if I just type Atom before it, it will create the file as well. I think so. Are there Atom experts here? Right yeah. Touch it first. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. Uh, oh, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's not installed. Use. Maybe I uninstalled it after last L meetup. <laughs> uh, so whatever you want. CD into source, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use use what you want. Like. 
touch it. If you, if you don't have VS Code, maybe. Or I'm maybe JEdit will be easier. Right okay, now. I can use. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Okay, and Vim. Vim, there's the weird like I have to keep my hand on VM. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll just we'll just enter in uh, edit mode, and it will be okay. So we said pad left. No, pad left. Oh, dot L. Oh, shit. Um. Yep. Okay. So maybe uh, we can uh, put this thing on the right so that we can read the error messages there. Yeah, do I do that? You click here and you move this on the right. You got it? Yeah. No, uh, yeah, click. <laughs> click. Oh, no, yeah, it doesn't work. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only uh. Sorry. Now you need to tear out the arrow keys and then first. Yeah. So insert with E. Yeah, I. Sorry. And then uh, yeah, you can write. Uh, so you know a bit of. Uh, Elm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I never wrote a model from scratch. It's like main module or something like that. So you start by module? Uh, little m, little m. Okay. And then the name of the module, so it's uh, pad left with yeah. Yeah, upper L. Uh, expose main or something like Exposing. that. Exposing. So, and then, yeah. Exposing and then inside brackets, two points. So we will expose everything for now. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then it's like main like depending if you're doing like a beginner program or whatever program you put the main before no because we're not going to do a program just a package yeah so we don't have it we don't need any main okay. so we can just start with the function one function we want to expose okay. so i think we can call the first function like pad left or something like that <laughs> with little p <laughs> okay, so yeah this will be something maybe a string right so the first thing is the name of the function. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Name of the function. Okay, uh. And then two points, right? Yeah. Uh, string. So this is the type signature. Okay. So it takes a strings and returns a string. And it's an arrow like the arrow. Yeah, the arrow is somewhere here. Like, Above, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
It's okay. Um, just give me a second. Mm. And how do you view the content of the committee? Sorry? How do you view the content of the committee? Um, well, I can, I can view here, like I have the modification here, but then I can also just, uh, if it's just a, s a small modification. Okay. Uh, There, but mm. is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, you are live because we are missing some sound for the video. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, where was I? So, it's committed. Then you have to tag. So, one thing that is a bit redundant is that you have the version is in the in the package file, but you have to tag it. Uh, for Git also, so that the Elm package uh, website knows which source it has to retrieve. So we will tag it. It's version 1.1.1. OK. And then we push everything, including the tags. If we didn't push the tags, it will not work. It will say to us that it's not working. So in the end, you just use Elm package publish. It verifies that everything is in order. So and there it is. Live. It should be actually. So we have this that is updated. So now I can click on the button. If internet works, yep. And it's one one one. So quite easy. Just few commits, change uh, files, bump automatically. You try to run your test and everything so that it works, so that you don't push versions that don't work. And that's all. Yeah, thanks. And uh, we we'll always verify that the tag version and the version in the JSON actually match. A mess. If they don't match, it's a mess. But I don't know what mess it is. Uh, <laughs> I know that at some point, I. Um, I tagged something. Uh, what, what is really, really uh, annoying, it's when you think it's going to be right. So you tag your code, and you push it on GitHub, and then you publish, and something is wrong, either in the publishing process or you, you made a mistake in your code or something like that. And when you do that, and you, if, if the publish is, is wrong, for example, and you have to redo modification. You have to redo bump, and you have to, it will bump to another version. It's 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 a bit mess. So if something like this happens, uh, the best thing I think is just to uh, uh, undo the the commit, keep it as stash, and redo it uh, correctly. But uh, und undo un uh, untag, and uh, retag it correctly. You can you can remove the tag on GitHub. Yeah, there is a, a command. But uh, it's not removed automatically if you remove it locally. So you have to manually remove it and change it on GitHub. But uh, in practice, I don't know exactly what happens if you do this kind of thing. Do you, do you know, some Peter? No? Maybe oh. because maybe you have to, I think you would have to force push if you have a tag, if it has already been tagged for one thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, tags are quite sort of loose, right? I thought you just need the tag and tag it with the new version. If it's if it's the wrong tag? Too bad, yeah. 
maybe the publishing will not, will not work because now if it's a wrong tag, uh, M package will not find the tag that is corresponding to the version, so it will not be able to download the code. So I think that the publishing will not work. Because the tag is reference to a, a shard of a shard. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it will not work. So what is going to change soon? How soon? We don't know. Uh, there is a roadmap about uh, the Elm language. It's been written since April, and it has not changed since yet. So it describes a few things that uh, Evan wants to work on, including what is going to main uh, evolution for the next version. So the next version is, specify is specified for single page application. So basically, how we improve Singapore application for Elm using things like server side rendering for the first initial answer so that you can have better reference referencing from uh, Git, uh, Google, Yahoo, and whatever. Uh, uh, it's going to be also. On which backend? Which backend? No, we don't know, but I think it will just generate uh, HTML and CSS that you can use. Uh, the, the compiler does. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe after you just have to manage your own server answers. I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, it will be, I guess the backend will be Node. It's, it's always, it's already working with. Yeah, yeah, it can be many things. It must be that they will, they will generate HTML and CSS because if you're JavaScript, there's a lot of. But can someone compile for those? No, 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 but I mean, what people would usually use on backend for that would be the CSS and conjunction with the element and client. I think it should not be confused with actual server side rendering. Yeah, yeah. Package on mm. a node page that does Elm server side rendering. I think it's this concept. If anybody saw the. Uh, Article lately where they pulled out React mm -hmm. JS from the first page on, and now I can't remember whether it was Google mm -hmm. or oh, Netflix. 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 Yeah, it's the whole point being, you know, you want to serve something quick, and then you can load all the heavy JavaScript. And I think that's the yeah. target for that one. Yeah, it's not intending to compile everything or to run on the server. It's just for the first page and to load quickly. Yeah. Uh, so they improved a lot of uh, uh, trimming of the unused code. So currently. Um, when you compile your code to JavaScript, every module that is needed is compiled and included in the JavaScript code. Um, when you gzip everything, it's still already pretty small, smaller than other uh, framework. But uh, it's going to be, from, from Evan's word, it's going to be like a massacre. Like, uh, it's going to be far smaller than what other competitors do for the assets you are. Serving. Uh, yeah, and basically it will improve the, the way you can split your different, co your different part of the code if you are doing multiple pages in different modules that you don't have to load all the pages on the first page and everything like that. But what it means for the package specifically uh, is that uh, be careful that what I'm saying is not official. So. Um, things are going to change and there is going to be a difference between what is a package and what is a project. So right now, there is the same Elm package to JSON for uh, things that are supposed to be uh, published on Elm packages and things that are supposed to be just personal projects or just web pages and whatever. So there is going to be a difference. So in the new Elm.json uh, file, um, there is going to be a type field which specifies if it's a package or, or not a package. And then a few different things. Now, you don't have the, the link to the GitHub uh, repository. So I don't know if it means that it still has to be GitHub and it will figure out the link with only the name of the repository or if, it, if there is going to be some other mechanism, I hope, but we don't know. Um, and another slight difference is that there will be a difference between uh, dependencies and test dependencies, so that you don't have to download everything if you are just using something and not testing it. 
and uh, yep, I think that's all. But yeah. Any other question that you didn't have yet? Yeah. Why did you make your own project? Uh, sorry, your own uh, mouse event thing instead of trying to just get it off stream. The one that is already given. Yeah, the, the one that you the one that you were using here. Yeah. Instead of using the mouse events from Elm. Uh, yeah, and then just trying to get whatever whatever you wanted to do up to you know get those changes upstream. Is that that was not something that wasn't possible? Upstream? What do you mean upstream? As in try and, and you know send pull requests to the to the Elm project in order to get. Ah, uh, because you cannot send pull requests to Evan. You, you will never uh, accept. I mean, <laughs> it's just he, he want to do things simple. And what I needed for my uh, mouse uh, events are the positions of the mouse events, and they are not provided in the HTML uh, HTML um, uh, module. It's the only thing that is provided is the event. So, and the event and the target because you you put your event attribute on the target when you create your HTML uh, uh, in Elm. Um, so what you mean is that it's a, if I follow my guideline, I should have asked Evan if uh, yeah. Yeah. if he, he was willing to. Um, yeah, it's not the only mistake I did with this one, uh, because there was also another module called uh, uh, Elm Mouse Events, same name. Um, doing something different. Doing something a little bit different, yes. So it's not the same functionality. But uh, I should have asked him if he wanted to implement it my way. But uh, uh, it was just after another uh, project I did. Uh, I did a package on debouncing and, uh, and uh, throttling. And I, I, for this project, I like, went to ask all the other uh, creators of packages similar. And most of them didn't answer. I get really nice answer from some of them, but when I try to implement thing, the first thing I did is uh, using formats, M formats, and it was deal breaker. Like they were not using deal form uh, M format, so uh, they asked me just modify what you want and don't format everything. So uh, I I ended up doing my project, my own uh, repository. But yes, it's a good remark. Yeah. I think for Evan. For my defense, you, yeah, I could have asked him, but it would not have changed anything. So, yeah. for all the projects, like the the other one I showed you uh, before, the Open Solid, uh, which is doing geometry things, uh, I participating in this project and I made pull requests and issues and discussed with him to implement few things that I needed. So this was better than just re-implement myself everything. But for this one, yeah, uh, I didn't. So. It was a bad choice. Yeah. On this Elm format, uh, I saw that Elm itself is not using Elm format. Um, I think it's just legacy. Uh, or maybe he needs some special things. But he's encouraging. It hasn't been an official release since Elm format was sort of came into the solid version. Yeah, but Evan and Richard are advising everyone to use Elm format. So yeah, I mean, I, there hasn't been an official Elm release. I don't think so. Prob yeah, probably not. Yeah, you're right. I think we'll see it as, as we go forward. Yeah. Maybe not, but I mean, because now you're talking about the Elm code, which is yeah, it's in its own package. Yeah. Well, what's strange to me is that the, the style guide that is embraced by the Elm code base itself is not the one that is, that is embraced by Elm format. Yeah. Different life cycles, right? Yeah, yeah, it's probably that because Elm format is quite new, so I guess Evan didn't want to reformat everything, of reformat all his code base, waiting for the next uh, big release, which is going to happen soon. I don't know how soon, but yeah, I think that's the main reason why. Mm. I think they spend a lot of time in that other things, right? So I think we'll see things just like Elm test is. Mm. But they are, yeah, and th they are working in close relationship uh, since, um, uh, for example, the, the documentation, the add docs and everything that you add in your package uh, documentation. Uh, 
these things are both uh, formatting and uh, and uh, important for the for Elm compiler. So they are working together to to say which how we should format it and how it should appear and etc etc. So I think it's going to be used in the next release. Yeah. We can check. We can check. Um, so core. Mm. Huh, build failing. <laughs> do you remember one that was not follow following the guideline or just I pick a yeah. list. Mm. Okay, so this one is not following clearly because, for example, there is two space here. It should be four with format, and it should be only one line per item. So let's see. Nope. <laughs> Also, I, I mean, yeah. if you follow the discussions and the history on, I mean, uh, event works in bigger steps, right? We all know that story. Yeah. But this is a good example, right? There's an ongoing uh, process he's in, which he sometimes evolves other people in, which is around how the module documentation should work. Mm. So, so he's not too concerned right now about the little thing, like whether they follow. He's more concerned about what's the next big step. Mm. For Module yeah, but we make it easier for, for it mm. public libraries to send that right? which will most likely change small things around what is going to be format for, for, for module, for example, which will then inflect pages in L format. So, so mm. there's just things are bound together, and he's quite aware of this. They, instead of just publishing his changes and then hoping everybody else catches up, right? Which, which mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. I noticed that Elm test had dependent had dependencies on a lot of third party modules. Yeah. Do you know if that's part of you know whatever whatever goes into something critical like Elm test is that going to be moving in as part of the Elm community stuff or? I don't know. I have no idea. No. I know that Evan uh, publishes. I mean, it, it goes back and forth. There was this initiative around called Elm Community. Mm -hmm some packages that were abandoned, uh, some quite central packages, and the Elm community arose to the occasion and became sort of a place for people. So, uh, Evans uh, usually mentions things like he prefers packages to be published under people's own initials. Because he knows that uh, Matthias, for example, always duplicates other people's code. Right? Or Somebody else provides some bottom. So, so it's it's also a way of distinguishing where does it come from, where does it come from for a general bucket, like the community, it's harder to tell the, the quality of that. Mm -hmm. right. That's just this argument. I don't know whether it's good or bad, but that's that's just what it is. That's also why some of the core packages are being put out and put into the zone, uh, for example, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, it's not that they are abandoned or anything, uh, but they just uh, they represent yeah. not the core, right? But they're right. still there. It's fine. It's I think it's actually it's not that much dependency, that many dependencies. It's just functionality that are not in core yet and you know that should not be in core I guess. So cool. Okay. No. Mm. So I think we mixed a bit together the. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it was good. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much for doing this mm. long presentation. Just arrived from the other side of the mm. door. Mm. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Where are the dance stickers? Someone promised.